So all these commands will be seeing in data filtering and sorting, right? So this helps us narrow down our data still further. In the previous uh, slide, as, as I've shown you, here, we are creating a table and retrieving the data using select command. And we are updating the table, copying the data, right? So all these things will be seeing in fundamental SQL commands. And after that, we'll be seeing still further to narrow down the data, still further to narrow down the data, we are using different other filtering and sorting commands like where, order by, and or not, in, in between, and like. Okay, and then further we'll be looking at some aggregate options and group by commands. Aggregate options you uh, like sum, average, count, min, max. These are all the common commands that you learn in each and every software, database software, when you learn, right? And group by command in any database software you go, you'll have group by command, like like you are grouping the data into different groups right and further we'll be looking on advanced topics in sql like uh, joins wherein we'll be learning inner join outer join left and right join cross join except and union all these commands of joins will be learning Right. I hope you are familiar with all of these, uh, at least few of these uh, join commands. So further, after completing the joins, advanced topics of joins where we'll be combining different tables and we'll be retrieving the data. Then we'll be moving to advanced concepts like subqueries, views and indexes so subqueries is the most powerful tool in sql where will be querying where you'll write a query inside a query and retrieve the data where we'll be writing a query inside a subquery query inside a query that is called a subquery right and then Moving further, we'll be learning some functions like string functions where we'll be doing, uh, like where we'll be looking like uh, lower upper, trim and trim R frame, all these string functions will be looking in detail and we'll be executing uh, them on the SQL server. And then we'll be looking at mathematical functions like seal, floor, random set seed, round and power. These are some mathematical functions which will be necessary for us. And then very important date, date functions like uh, knowing the current date and time and then knowing the differences between current date and any other dates, age and extract, all these comments will be looking in date functions. Then we'll be looking data conversion functions like converting string to maybe let us say date or string to number how to convert all these things will be looking into in date uh, data type conversions right and we'll also be looking at performance tuning like after going through all sql uh, classes we'll be uh, knowing that like for a particular problem to solve there are many ways to solve it right there are many ways of solving a problem but which problem is which uh, which way of solving that problem gives us efficiency that's what we'll be seeing in performance tuning further advanced topics like uh, pattern matching which are very important for interviews uh, most commonly like uh, Usually these questions, pattern matching questions will be asked in the interviews. So we'll be looking at the pat pattern matching also in SQL. Right. 
and we have some bonus lectures over here interview tips keys access control and uh, table space all these things will be covering right this is an outline of the course where the contents are being like the contents that we are going to discuss are shown and uh, now we will see what is uh, sql and when it was started all those things it, just a brief introduction about sql so sql is structured query language sql is structured query language so we will concentrate on the word language so why this is called as a language so when you are communicating between between the user and the database like the communication between the user and the database we have database on one end and the user on the other end and to communicate to have a communication between the two we have to learn a language right a communication between two persons happens with a language if you don't know a language you cannot communicate right so to to have communication we learn structured query language so to communicate user will communicate with the database using structured queries why it is called a structured structured because all the data that we have in sql it is structured it is columnar data it is indexed data right it has got a structure predefined model in it right you can put it in different ways or different terms it is the same thing so structured query language so with this language will be able to communicate the user can be in a position to communicate with the database so whatever the data is stored he can retrieve it he can store the data he can copy the data he can delete the data so all these things can be done in structured query language in 1970 a scientist called as ef cord introduced he published a paper on relational database uh, relational databases like saying that it is possible to store it is possible to store the data and retrieve the data whenever it is possible right so then after uh, uh, his publishing that paper ibm started to work on this paper and introduced this relational databases where we have a particular data model and we can copy it we can delete it we can add it we can insert everything we can do right from then relational databases started so why it is called as relational database why it is called as relational database basically because when we create a table or when we create structured data we have columns and rows right and these columns let us say in one table a company cannot store entire data it cannot store entire data right so it needs different tables in which it has to store its data so when you are storing your data in different tables what happens you need to maintain the relation between the tables so that you can retrieve the data which is relational from one table to another table for that purpose what we do we will have 
one or more columns in common between the tables right we will see the we will see uh, how the relational databases by uh, giving an example uh, in further upcoming slides right so this is what is about relational databases right so sql is a domain specific language first of all it is called as a domain specific language also why because because here we are we are only dealing with the structured data we are not dealing with unstructured data like the data that we will be like the, the data which is learned uh, in hadoop mongodb so we will be dealing only with structured data in sql that is the reason why that is the reason why sql is called as domain specific language okay and sql is called as declarative language why why uh, sql is called as declarative language because this is not a procedural language in procedural language you will write what to do and how to do it right but in declarative language you only you only do you only write what to do here you are only writing what to do let us say in procedural languages like c c sharp other programming languages there you will write what to do and how to do it let us say you want to find the factorial of a number that is what to do and how to do you will write the procedure what has to be done sequence of uh, uh, lines or the lines in a program they say how to do that right so here in sql we only write what to do but we don't know what is happening behind the screen to execute that what to do so in sql we only mention what to do let us say i want to uh, uh, get uh, retrieve the data whose like the customer data whose age is greater than 25 years so you are just writing what to do here you are not retrieving uh, you are not writing how to do it so how to do is performed behind the screen that is the reason why this is called as declarative language right and this is now called as sql sql but earlier it is called as seql right it was called as sql now it is called as sql so the reason behind that is like the, the reason behind that was like seql meant structured english query language so here whatever you write all the words you type those words are from common english words like select like insert all these words the keywords that you are using are simple english language words that was the reason why it was called as seql sql earlier now it is called as sql so it it is structured english query language okay so this was a brief introduction about sql uh guys are you able to see my screen yes 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 Uh, Raghavendra, I think uh, you need to check your screen because uh, uh, something is um, approaching. Approaching, no? Because I'm, I was not showing anything on the screen; it was uh, just uh, stationary, right? 
so before uh, starting with uh, querying and all those installations just we will see uh, this uh, like asset principles what are asset principles because this is a compulsory interview question every time when you go to an interview when you are when you say that i know sql this question on asset principles will be asked for sure so what is acid this is an acronym right this is an acronym for atomicity consistency isolation and durability so there are four words in acid right so any database professional any database professional who is going to evaluate the databases or application architecture should know this acid principle so any database software or application architecture should achieve all these four attributes right so now let us see what are these four attributes like how they are meant right so first one is atomicity if you see atomicity it is stating that atomicity is an all a or non proposition what is all or non proposition like for example today if you see everything goes on a transaction basis right everything goes on transactions so if paytm banks like let us say uh, the online banking right whatever everything all the software say will go on transaction basis right so when a transaction is to be performed let us say through paytm you are just transferring some money to some uh, customer right so there are some processes that you have to follow inside that like you are entering your user id you are uh, giving your password these are all the these are all the like uh, uh, things you do before executing your transaction final transaction so all these uh, like processes what does it say is all or none so this should be once all the processes are complete only then only then commit should happen otherwise let us say uh, when your transaction like you have entered your id password and you have entered beneficiary name and you have uh, let us say you have uh, started to transfer the money when the transaction was in process let us say and it did not happen for some reason maybe might be your internet did not work or anything did not work at 99% level your transaction stopped so whole set of processes are not complete over there so i cannot say that 99 boss 99% of my process is complete i will commit this process because transaction is not complete so only when if all the processes are complete only then commit should happen or it should not happen that is what is atomicity is all or none proposition all the processes should be complete only then commit should happen only then it should save in the database saying that the transaction has been done and this amount has been deducted from this one uh, this account to and amount has been added to other account right so that commit should happen only after completion of all the processes otherwise otherwise it should roll back otherwise it should roll back that's what happens right when you are doing some transaction it, when it fails what what happens maybe you'll get a message saying that so much amount of money has been deducted or debited from your account but 
the transaction the user or the client on the other end if he did not receive uh, the amount what happens bank will roll back the transaction right so that's what is atomicity this is the first principle that any database should follow once everything is done then it should commit otherwise it should not commit right second one is consistency consistency what does consistency mean consistency means that let us say for example okay uh, just uh, we will read this one consistency ensures that a transaction can only bring the database from val one valid state to another right what does this mean now let us say basically giving an example now there is an user a and there is an user b and user user a <coughs> wants to transfer some thousand rupees to user b right then he starts he initiates uh, doing that right what he does he enters user id password and then again he adds uh, user b's uh, account number into his beneficiary list all these things will be doing it all these works he will do it in the back end so now the first thing that has to be done is before doing the transaction the database has to read whether sufficient amount is present in the user a's account or not now let us say if the account uh, in the user a's account if he doesn't have sufficient money to transfer to user b then there is no meaning right it, so it has to read first it has to read user a's account it has to confirm that user a has 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees in his account then it will go and read user b's account right and then it will uh, say that okay a is equal to uh, a minus 100 it will deduct a, a minus 1000 so it will deduct 1000 from here and it will go and add to the user b's account right b is equal to b plus 1000 so all these things will be done before completing a transaction right so here one thing is common what is it common like the amount before the transaction and the amount after the transaction is the same so in the user account let us say uh, user a has 2000 rupees in his account and user b he has 3000 rupees in his account right the, so before transaction some of the amount is 5000 and once the transaction is done let us say the 1000 rupees is transferred from user a user a's accounts to user b's account then the sum of the amount should be the same so once the amount 1000 is deducted in the user a's account and added to user b's account so user a will be having 1000 rupees and user b will be having 4000 rupees again 4000 plus 1000 is 5000 so finally so before the transaction and after the transaction the sum of the amounts is the same finally the sum is the same so that is what is the consistency right one valid state to another valid state so this is the valid condition saying that some of the amounts were some of the amounts before and after the transactions are same so that is the valid condition so that is the consistency that we are going to maintain so hope consistency is clear to all of you then we'll move to isolation 